and uh, see that the rocket uh, in the uh, in the Gemini capsule, but uh, just barely. Uh, let's be sure that all the maneuvering rockets are working. That test went successfully, as have all the others this morning. When this launch gets started, uh, we'll be watching for several critical points. Of course, ignition, the liftoff three seconds later. Uh, then a roll maneuver in 10 seconds and 23 seconds of pitch maneuver. The roll, they turn the spacecraft just a little bit this way, pitch, pitch over so it gets in the right flight path to hit that window in the sky at 17,500 miles an hour, precisely within one or two miles an hour. And just a little area out there, it has to go through with just the right pitch and attitude in order to go into the proper orbit. Back at Mission Control, they've got about 20 seconds to decide whether it's in exactly the right to pattern for a successful orbit and to give them the go for the mission. Uh, if not, uh, they order them to return and they abort the mission. They can do that instantly by a normal separation procedure and re-entry that they would use uh, at the end of the flight at any rate. And in that case, they probably come down around the Canary Islands and there's a recovery force out there waiting for them. Or, of course, if uh, after they get into orbit during that first uh, uh, that first orbit, if uh, everything isn't functioning properly in the spacecraft, they can bring them down in the Atlantic off Bermuda, uh, which is very roughly the area they'll land in. And when they complete the mission successfully, they would land about 500 miles east of Cape Kennedy, from which they took off uh, under those circumstances. It's T minus uh, five hours, and five minutes, and 30 seconds. After that uh, pitch maneuver, the next uh, critical point in the takeoff is maximum dynamic pressure, max Q it's called, one minute and 19 seconds after takeoff. Uh, that is when uh, the ship goes through the uh, sound barrier, uh, when it uh, exceeds a speed of around six or 700 miles an hour, and it takes the maximum buffeting at that point. It's about uh, 40,000 feet high at that time, and seven two-thirds miles from the peak. Our uh, Boston University scope five, camera five, down there, we expect that we'll be able to see uh, the time. ship actually go through that control. point. Start the final status check in the countdown. They're actually in that check at this moment, and they are about to complete it, I should have said. The telemetry recorders have been turned on in the spacecraft, this little seven foot high cubicle, which is really nothing more than a couple of crowded telephone booths for these men. This is Gemini Launch Control now, T minus four minutes and 15 seconds and counting. As the Nuts Cooper and Conrad still reporting the status of their spacecraft is go, we continue our checks in the blockhouse. We have now tied in the launch vehicle, the spacecraft, the control center in Houston, and the Air Force Eastern Test Range. All is go at the present time. Now coming up on three minutes and 50 seconds and coming. This is Gemini Launch Control. Getting into the final minutes before this launch. Astronauts in perfect condition, cheery, as you saw a moment ago. Big smiles as they were seen both leaving uh, their sleeping quarters over on Merritt Island and as they got suited up and as they actually got into the spacecraft. Three minutes and 22 seconds and counting. They're checking with a computer update. This is the spacecraft computer to ensure that it is synchronized for the launch. has come 
from the range for launch. This is Gemini Launch Control, T-minus two minutes and counting. We have confirmation that our computer has been updated in the spacecraft. All systems still go on the Gemini 5 countdown. Thank you. 